Hi friends, welcome to another episode of uh, Soaring for Chaos. And with me is an amazing guy, um, Diego Martinez Ramos. And we met a few months ago during the pandemic in uh, close to Ciudad de Mexico or the capital of Mexico, Mexico City, when he was visiting his friend and I was staying in a place called Cuernavaca in Morelos. Como estas amigo? Muy bien, ¿y tú? Muy bien, todo bien. So, it was such a joy to get to know all of you. I was in a foreign land. I did not even know Espanol. And you really treated me like a brother. That was amazing. It was beautiful to, to meet you and to be in the same place. At that yeah. time, it was magical. Yeah, yeah. So, Diego, you are always full of art, whether it's music or it's uh, poetry, storytelling, and uh, photography, videos. Were you always like this? Oh, that's a good question. I hadn't really given it much thought, but I believe that it all clicked for me when my grandfather uh, gave me a film camera for my uh, 13th birthday and he saw me taking pictures with a phone and the moment he gave me that camera i mean he saw the pictures and he gave me the film camera and that like kick-started my creative uh journey you could say and from that moment i never stopped taking pictures and one thing to, to another. My brother also um, is a very good guitar player. So I learned a, what I could from him and I picked up a guitar and I, I just love that. I love the feeling. And, um, and yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a question that I hadn't really asked myself, but I, I do believe that I could have been a whole different I didn't path. I could have been like a lawyer or something. I, I see myself. <laughs> <laughs> I could, maybe. But that's, that's a different Diego. That would be a different Diego. So what I find really amazing was when we all got together, you, me, Pablo, Rodrigo, and um, Tonio, was how naturally the music flowed and the creativity was flowing and how easily we would go from discussions on spirituality with Alan Watts, even when we talked to Ann Watts. So that's really amazing. It's not common to have that kind of camaraderie, especially you guys hardly knew me. And then we were able to connect through music, yes. through dance. And um, so tell us a little bit about your life. Where did you grow up? And how did you get into the arts? Well, about my life, I've constantly been moving. I grew up in um, a place that is very near to Mexico City. It's called uh, Satellite. So I grew up there eight years. After that, I moved to Cancun. So beach, that's where I always feel very tropical. Um, and after that, when I was 15, I came back to Mexico City to start um, what is it like preparatoria? We call it uh, high preparatory school. school. Uh huh. Yeah. So that's it's been a rough ride because moving from one city to another, making friends in different places. I've been very fortunate to have a lot of friends and to enjoy a lot of uh, friendships. At the same time, it has uh, been um, a, a task to keep up with a lot of people and to, um, you know, like check in with them, see where they are. And if we can, it's interesting because friends that I've met very young uh, come to Mexico City and we can like, meet up again so that's that's good because you start to connect it's like a circle because you start and then you come back and it keeps going i mean you you can tell me about it i'm sure you have a lot of friends 
that you knew back when. And well, that's, it's been an interesting ride coming here and, you know, Mexico is like a, an interesting place to, to grow up. And I started with the arts, like I said, with the film camera. And I was going to be a like politician because I won like this contest where we were like uh, the United Nations, uh, mo you know, the... Model United Nations. Mod uh, yeah, the, yeah, the moon, we call it. But uh, I won that. And I felt that I was destined to be like politician because I felt all of that, uh, you know, adrenaline, like speaking, and it's it's very it's intriguing. But I chose the to study filmmaking and uh, television just because I could use the camera, and for me that was enough that I could use this tool to discover, and I discovered while studying that there's so much more to, to what I thought was possible. And um, I've been just very, very grateful that I took that path. It's a hard one, especially nowadays in this uh, virtual era. But I believe that uh, storytelling and uh, connecting through images and uh, is something that is is needed more than ever and we use it every day is something that connects us and um, I love that I love that and it's something that keeps me there at the same time it can be stressful for me because I'm a very I don't know like uh, I take so much in like thinking and sometimes I stress myself but I need to remind myself that like the arts and it's something that it's more about connecting with the heart than with the mind but uh yeah that's that's about it yeah very true in fact um, if it wasn't for the arts if it wasn't for music if it wasn't for sh sharing stories we would not have connected because i was barely speaking in espanol when i got to know you all and um, and of course there were pablo had been to the us a few times and uh, i think uh, rodrigo had been a few times but the cultural divide reduced when we were able to link with music, with stories, with common heritage between the United States and California, as well yeah. as the linkages to the East, to the spiritual practices of the, of the you know, the tribals in Mexico, yes. including the Mayans and the Aztec people. So much yes. in common. It was amazing, totally amazing. Yes. So, yeah, and I, I believe that, in a way, that was what really connected us. Yes. The, sharing all those things that you just said. We started talking about Buddha and about Alan Watts, and instantly there was, link, you know, something clicked. Yes, We didn't exactly. need more. So we went across age and we went across culture exactly. to find what's common, which is being human, finding meaning during the pandemic. So the pandemic has gone, it's been going on for a while. I don't know if you had a lockdown. In India, we've had a few and um, it hasn't been pleasant for many people. How are you able to keep up with your art and your work? It's, it's definitely been a challenge because we are social animals and uh, confined spaces like like this serve us for for a time but after that it just starts to get whole different levels of crazy <laughs> so for me it's been crazy and um i've struggled keeping up my own um self in relation with what i want to do with what i want to express Nevertheless, I believe that there are keys to being able to achieve the discipline which is necessary to keep up. So for me, for example, uh, each day I try to, to practice. I try to do a little bit and that little bit serves me for the next day, the next week. 
and each day builds up. And I, it's like a, a mantra that I keep that uh, you need to keep doing it, keep at it. You need to be disciplined and you need to pursue and you need to carve and you need to find where there might not be something that you think might be useful or help, help, helpful. But at the end, um, it's just something that it's uh, personal to me. I couldn't be myself if I do not, I would explode. I would totally explode <laughs> if I did, did not like let out all that energy into something. It, it can be either playing the guitar or, or drawing as well as running. For example, for me, running and um, going outside to run, which is allowed for us in, in, the, in the lockdown that yeah. we have. Yeah. Unfortunately, because we're not like Spain, that they couldn't go outside at all. At all. And I couldn't walk my dog, which they are all like with me. I have my dogs here. Oh, so cute. Yes. Look, they're my my partners. But yeah. I've been lucky to be able to go out and run with my dog and to do a little bit of like outside uh, activities that I wouldn't do back when, but now it, I feel that I've been pushed to go outside more, and that also helped with the outlet, the, you know, the energy outlets that we need to get to, to give and to receive and give. It's a, it's a whole process. That's true. That's so true. And uh, speaking of energy outlets and art, I know that you're very good at cotton jamming. And uh, how about jamming together for this so show, Soaring Through Chaos? You can bring <laughs> in Bob Dylan if you like, you can bring in Don McLean, you can bring in Juan Alvarez, your choice. Oh, <laughs> uh, Shankar, I knew, we both knew that you were going to do this. But we can try, we can try uh, a little bit of freestyle. Sure, sure. For special edition of Soaring to Chaos. I don't know how this is going to go, but um, maybe we can... Spontaneous. Diego, <laughs> you're, the, you're the coolest. You just yeah. made it up. I just made it up completely. But that, that's life. You have to make things up in the spot. <laughs> Especially when things are not easy to predict. When every day is a new day and we don't even yeah. know what's going to happen. Might as well be alive before we are dead, right? I mean, I have, I have, I had a, uh, like a topic 
that I wanted to talk about, especially on, on that theme, that you cannot predict anything. Because for, it's just a short story, but when I was um, doing my, my graduate project, because I just recently graduated in this summer, we were the, the virtual graduation um, generation. So it, it was interesting to, to be in that place. Of course, very grateful to, to be able to finish and to conclude. At the same time, it was weird. Anyway, uh, before that, we were filming. I, I, I don't know if I told you, but we were filming our, our short films. And I was very stressed because things didn't go as planned when I was filming. I went to a, my project consisted on going to a beach and filming like two days. We had one day arriving and one day filming. And um, that second day was the only day that we had to film. So the first day that we were, we arrived and my producer comes to me and she tells me that she received the message from the from the local authorities telling her that a storm an 80 kilometer wind storm was going to hit the beach and that we weren't we weren't going to be able to to film at all i mean at that moment spontaneity was in its maximum expression like I had to come up in the spot with a whole different script. I returned to the hotel and I had to cross everything and to come up with something new, which was in itself like um, an expression of, of being spontaneous. That at the time was very, very stressful. It's, I mean, I can tell it with a smile right now. But <laughs> at that time, I was going back and forth and my crew depended on their director to carry on, like to keep up the dynamic and the whole attitude that was failing. And for me, it was very stressful. At that moment, I thought that the whole world was crumbling. So I came up with something new. I, we, we did it. Thankfully, we had like a couple hours before. It's, it's so funny because we were in the like sand, mountains and we were filming on top of the mountain and we had like this surfboard in in the mountain right so eventually everything was cool the wind was blowing and there was a lot of sand blowing to our faces we couldn't really see much and i'm glad that our equipment wasn't spoiled because of the sand but at one point the Surfboard, which was in the sand dune, it, I mean, there was this one like wind uh, that came, uh, you know, Rafael, it came to us and that we just felt it at the moment that it was going to like completely be the one that was going to blow us away. At that moment, we each turned to, to look at each other and the surfboard fl flew i mean the wind blew the surfboard like like 20 meters into the air high in the sky and it flew like 150 meters down the coast and we had to go running down the the dune like it was a stream i wouldn't recommend it but the thing is the point of the story is that I was feeling very down and upset that I didn't get to carry out what I wanted to do. And I thought that my whole project was crumbling. My whole world was crumbling. It was last semester of, of my four years of studying. So I had a lot of hopes. After that, I had the opportunity to go back and to film a little bit more and to edit it and to process the film and everything came out nicely. The thing that I didn't know was that at the midpoint of the semester, 
COVID was going to strike or to appear. And half of my colleagues' projects were, were had to be canceled. So oh. and, like the half the the other half of the semester, my colleagues were going to film their short their short films, you know. So I was very stressed out for my project and for what I could do, but I didn't, it didn't like figure out in my mind that everything was going to be canceled for the other half of the semester. And so they, they haven't even filmed, they haven't had the opportunity to, to do their project. So talk about planning, talk about having expectations and, and, change of plans. Like, it's like a Bob Dylan song. It's a simple twist of fate that just simply happens and you can't really have plans. So that for me has been something difficult to learn, but coming back to spontaneity, it's, it's best to be like in the moment, in the present, and to of course have an idea of what you want to do, but you can never plan and you, you can never really know what's going to happen it's crazy it's it is crazy. in fact um, this is the most um, most chaotic thing i've seen in my life <clears throat> of all the events that i've seen like right now i'm planning to go to africa but i cannot really plan if i plan the plan has to be very flexible so what i'm doing is what i did in when i was in mexico i don't know if you even remember i was in mexico for only three weeks yeah. But because of COVID and the complete lockdown in India, as well as simultaneous lockdown, shelter in place in California, it made sense to stay. So I ended up staying for three months. And if you remember, <laughs> and if you remember, um, Rosario, who used to cook at my home before I met you, she had symptoms of COVID. So yeah. I said, Sorry, but you can't come and I'll give you all the money, but you cannot come. You have to stay at home. And she was at home for six weeks. So guess what? I learned to cook. <laughs> and by the time you guys came, that was like a month later, I was cooking Mexican food and Indian food. And so I would make Mexican yeah. food, Indian food for you with Mexican vegetables. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> That was great. With Peruvian beans yeah. and uh, what is it, the colorful beans and white beans and negro beans and pinto beans, yeah. all kinds of <laughs> things, uh, you know, coyote. Yeah. Even mame. <laughs> yeah, but the, the crazy thing, more, more crazy even, is that you were alone for yeah. what, like a month? A month. A month. I was alone. Completely because... alone, cooking for yourself or with. Rosario at the first at the, at the beginning but alone and we just came into your life and you started cooking for us so you <laughs> developed a new skill cooking for people which you never had first time in my before. life yeah first time in your life and yes. you for us yes. and learning espanol and uh, sharing stories about the world and uh, yeah yeah so uh, the media as you know is changing because at least for the next, I don't know, a few months, few years, we're not going to be able to do uh, the way things were happening before. So like feature films and documentaries maybe may shrink, but short films, social media are growing, right? Social media are going to continue yeah. to grow. So where do you see your career going in terms of the changes? Every day something is changing, even in the media. It's, it's, a, it's a great topic because I believe that there's a lot of inertia, like you said, and social media just like exacerbates excess, excess, excess that. Did I say that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes it bigger. It makes the, that the ball that is rolling, it makes that bigger. So for me at least, and I believe that for many young, um, not even young creatives, there's a lot of pressure because social media does that. Like it, it um, puts you in the, 
in the bowl, in the mix. And it's hard to get out of that. It's hard to, to create like job opportunities that do not blend with social media anymore. It's, it's like irrational to not use a tool that would only help you. But at the same time, it comes at a cost. And, and if, if some of you have seen the Social Dilemma uh, documentary, which is right on Netflix, streaming right now, it talks about the cost of social media, which it can be a very powerful tool for a lot of things, especially political affairs and all of that. At the same time, it, we are the, I mean, there's this, uh, I don't know if, if it's on that documentary, but it's, there's a phrase that says that, I believe it is, that if, if the service is free, that means you're the product. You are the product. So, yeah. You are the product. So it, it's, it's hard because um, our information is there and at the same time we constantly upload and um, try to connect. And while we are trying to connect, we are also trying to make a living and we are also trying to find new opportunities. So it, it's definitely been hard trying to balance for me. I'm a, like a person that puts things in, in, in like perspective and I try to not get too much involved. I actually had like my Instagram account where I had all my pictures and all my videos, clients, and um, basically every person that I've met up to that point in social networks, I deleted that completely. What was the reason why did you did delete your Instagram account? I felt before COVID that I was um, selling myself and my work. And it's, it's something that was um, like in the spur of the moment, I just felt um, dirty. Uh, it, it, it wasn't working for me. So I chose to just delete that and quit social media for about two months. So I lost every I lost every contact, professional contact that I had. All my pictures um, that were like in, in a gallery in, in Instagram, I lost that, and it it came at a cost because I since struggled to find you know the the contact, and uh, I know that a lot of you might say that I put my I mean I I put the foot myself you know mm -hmm. so I, I um, created a complication for me but at the, at the time it wasn't working so I, I really thought about what it was doing to me and what it was doing for me and put that in the balance and uh, it, it came out in the other end but now I recognize the fact that it's a tool that we have to learn to live with these things because they're not going anytime soon but I mean don't you think it's it's hard for like especially young people to not get so caught up in that whole ball rolling I mean it's it's going so fast that it's, it's hard to keep up and um, it's hard to keep up with the the effects that we do not see uh, they're not so clear so visible you have to dig a little bit to understand how it's changing your perspective and, and, and all of that it's it's hard yeah yeah i mean the rate at which things are changing uh, i haven't seen this kind of changes in fact uh, more and more movies more and more television serials are now getting released on social media uh, new actors trained, untrained, people like me had never done so much media or even um, internet work. I used to do everything. I used to even do videos, but I would not show my face until this year. <laughs> uh, because I thought I was, I was embarrassed. I did not want to show my face. Yeah. But this year, there was really no choice. No choice. No. So a lot has changed. A lot has changed. And, and this is the, the time of, of Zoom also. Zoom calls. Yes. The, 
for example, I've been having a art classes, drawing classes with a teacher, great, great teacher. She's in Spain. And I met her once, like in Chiapas, but since it's all been a virtual relationship, which it's odd. At the same time, it's becoming more and more natural each day. My, my niece, the, mm. yeah, my niece. Yeah. She is um, having, she's four years old and she's having her classes like every other kid in online computer. So that to me is, it's, it's crazy to think that, for example, a generation that grew up with, um, you know, they always talk about the, the I generation that they grew up with iPods and the iPad or whatever. I mean, that's one thing, but to have your classes on a computer and to that be the, the norm, I believe that that will have end up creating a generation that does things differently, you know, completely. Yeah, yeah, in fact, um, I mean, um, it's hard to even imagine what their life will be like when they grow up, because um, they, at least to a certain extent, at least this year, we're talking about several months of not socializing, playing, you know, playing in the field and uh, doing things together. Uh, a few months ago, uh, you know, using a phone would be parents would control this device. And now parents want you to be on the device so that you can take classes. So much has that, changed. So much has changed. Much, so much. Before, if somebody wore a mask, they would not be allowed in a bank. Now, if you don't wear a mask, you're not allowed in the bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I was talking with my, with my dad about that. The fact that before, at least here in Mexico City, uh, before COVID, if you saw someone with the with the mask, you looked at them like you are uh, you're, you're too cautious. Like you're you're going over overboard. I mean, yeah, overboard. You, we we saw it like that, but now it's 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 the new normal. Yeah, yeah. So where do you see the world going? I mean, now I remember when I first came to Mexico. Um, even the president was just saying, oh, this whole thing is a joke. And he was hugging everybody. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. that was just about oh my God. five months ago. <laughs> was five months like ago, March, man. April. April, yeah. <laughs> he was hugging everybody. And <laughs> See, he was saying that, but more hugs, more hugs. More hugs, more hugs. Better, yeah, but. Yeah, so much has changed in the last five months, six months. So much. I, I, I think that there, of course, there are multiple scenarios and I believe that every person inhabits their own reality to a certain extent because then we have to, it collides with the world, the real world. But I believe that there will be a lot more virtuality, like um, virtual... Uh, Virtual reality, I mean, it's like, it's, it's that. And I believe that this has sped up, the, like we were talking, like the, and, and to a certain extent, the entropy of the whole thing is going so fast that I believe that either it will crack or we, we can like develop more and more things based on what we have learned on this. But... Uh, the thing is that I believe that either there will be a lot more this and, you know, like being completely stuck in our devices. But I also see a surging like a renaissance of like print, for example, books. I just recently, let me show you. Mm -hmm. In this, we were talking about like Instagram and and pictures in, in, in devices. But I recently bought a photo book, which I mean, it's not, it's not like something very special, but for me, like being able to scroll, scroll, like to flip through these pages and to actually feel and, and, and touch the book and see the images here, it, it, 
it's so special and it's something that we've been so like um, domesticated to use this and to experience our content in here that we have forgotten how beautiful a printed page can be. So I also see a renaissance in this coming back and people like missing that, missing that, you know? And if you can produce something which is of, of quality and that has a story, people will go to that because it will be something new. That it's, it's a complete like, it's, it's logical to say that it's new, but it, it's the thing that things go so fast that the old is new and what yeah. is new is old. <laughs> so we're going back to the future. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, time is like yeah. in a Looping back, cycle. cyclical. It's so yeah. weird. In fact, um, speaking of which, hard as these times are, especially for your virtual graduation batch this year uh, and all that, what are the gifts that you have seen? In what ways have you grown over the last few months? Uh, what kind of things did Corona bring to you? Wow, it's... It's honestly... It's uh, answering that implies that I've been extremely fortunate and extremely lucky that I have um, had like financial stability to be able to develop uh, skills and to read books and make books or whatever. So just just starting with that, it's it's amazing that uh, I have been able to to understand that that I am an extremely fortunate person. And that has like, became a process of just um, starting to look at the things around me and starting to appreciate people more, starting to appreciate my habits, my discipline, and to connect more. I have meditated a thousand times uh, more than I've uh, before. So that to me also speaks about like a different kind of rhythm. There's this book, uh, Thomas Mann's uh, The Magic Mountain, uh -huh. which speaks about how time uh, becomes different. And I believe that like the fabric of time in since Corona has been so different that uh, I have learned to take that in and to like process it differently, you know, like just just being able to look at what's going on outside and look within, because that's the the whole thing is that you want to look at Netflix and you want to look at YouTube or whatever, but at, there's times that since we're alone and uh, maybe we, well with family but confined, you are forced to look within, and th I believe that that's something the whole world has benefited from and that at least I have started doing it more and I believe that people my age also have started doing it more and we are more conscious and we are more prepared to like understand what's going on maybe not like um, deal with it like in the best way but at least understand it and that's something that I believe the world was missing and we have all at least at a certain degree, started to develop more of that skill. So that, that for me has been the, a very good part of this is that I have been able to look within. I had the time because before, like the inertia was so fast, just in normal activities that we didn't really have the time. So for me, that really has made me change my perspective. And now the fabric of time has shifted. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So that reminds me, um, I love the way you bring in music and art. Would you like to share some of your art or would you like to sing a song or would you like to play something you've done in the last few months? Mm, I, can, I can share something. I can share some pictures. Certainly, certainly. I would love that. Let me, oh man, the memory. Look, 
these are from when I was filming my my graduate project. Okay, okay. There. So, uh, would you like to sing us another song, maybe, or uh, share? I mean, how you feel I, about I, I, I can I can share a lick that I've sure. been. Um, just this morning, I was coming up with this. I mean, I haven't really thought about what it is, but... How does it sound? It was amazing. Did you create it today? Was this yeah, your I mean, creation I, today? Yeah, I, it was also improvised. This, wow. uh, it, it, it comes like it's easier to me to just like in the spot feel it. Because if I start writing something or, or like start to take it to the paper, it uh, becomes a little bit more like systematic. And I'm very, I'm, I'm Virgo, so I'm very like, I have to be perfect. <laughs> but I feel that uh, a little bit of imperfection is, is better sometimes now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's healthy. It's actually such a confluence between uh, spontaneously created little pieces and then putting it together in a disciplined way. So, exactly. The chaotic moments coming together to create some kind of an order. That's the art. <laughs> That's the art. In, in, with discipline. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. With some kind of an order. Yeah. yeah. I was listening to one of the groups from Sweden, ABBA, and uh, mm. they did that. They came up with little, little pieces that were very orig original and totally spontaneous. There's two couples. And um, then they would mix it together systematically and create amazing music that revolutionized, that revolutionized pop music. Yeah, to, to and think. I see that happening. I mean, I've, we've seen Black Eyed P and uh, what is it, the groups uh, changing even the way music is being played or received. For the first yeah. time, Spanish music has come of age and has gone around the world, right? For the first time, really original, music has been translated from, from Espanol to English as it was being produced within months. Yeah. yeah. And it's amazing what's happening. I had a teacher that used to say that the less um, resources, the more creative. creativity. 
Exactly, exactly. So less is more and we're getting a chance to practice that. We should do this more often. I'm really enjoying talking about different things, jamming together and uh, learning from each other. And how should it's I always say it? Always nice talking with you. Tu tu muy amable. Is that correct? Or tu tu muy amables? Eh, si eres muy amable. Eres muy amables. Yes, yes. Eres muy amable. Sí, tú también. Ustedes muy amables. Ustedes muy amables. Yeah, yeah. Sí. I have a long way to go to keep practicing my Espanol, but I will continue talking to you. Whenever you want, I'll be here. Yes, and uh, so much more to do together. And uh, maybe if things go all right in the next year or two, I'll meet you either in Spain or in Mexico. Who knows? Or, or maybe I'll go to India. Yes, you're welcome to join us in India. There's so much to see. I would and, love it. Uh, once things get a little more settled, maybe in a couple of years, Nobody knows how long, but for sure, <laughs> for sure things will settle down. It's not going to be like this forever. And uh, so please stay in touch. And uh, how should I say it? Hasta la vista. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> <laughs> sí, yeah. muy bien. Please stay in touch. And Muchas to gracias. those watching, we will continue jamming if you're interested and finding new ways of connecting. Namaste. Namaste. And uh, please stay in touch. Thanks for listening. Thank Anyone? you. Thank you.